Hello everyone and welcome to my new video. Today I would like to show you one game from the recently finished European Championship. This was a very important game and this is one of my favorite games from this European Championship and it is, it was played by one of the future champions in uh, an important match. They had to win this one and he helped greatly not only in this match but in general. Uh, that's also a favorite player of mine. His name is Evgeny Tomaszewski. A very, um, very nice person as well not only as a, a, a great player himself he is the current russian champion but before we go to this game i would like to show you a fragment from a game of his coach uh, he had the luxury and the pleasure of working with yuri yuri Rezuvayev, one of the great ussr players of um, the not that distant past uh, Rezuvayev was a great expert in all the areas of uh, the game but uh, his main contribution to the chess is probably the following position that we have at the moment typical situation uh, he had an isolated pawn on d4 after a trade on c3 though that isolated pawn has been turned into an isolated pair of pawns nevertheless the plan for white in this situation is always the same it is attack on the king side the way that Rezuvayev found this way that he found was a very original one and i would say it's close to ingenious maybe we can call it even ingenious he came up with the move h4 in his game against farago and that was a completely new method of fighting with the isolated pawn or the pair of pawns for the king side attack the main idea is that if black accepts the sacrifice with bishop h4 there will be knight h4 queen h4 and the rook will be lifted as usual in these lines of um, the isolated pawn pawns positions the rook is lifted and then the queen will follow with the two bishops eyeing the king side white's attack is going to be very very strong farago didn't risk to go for this one he chose a safer way he played knight a5 but here Rezuvayev jumped knight g5 which is another idea behind the move h4 is we are going to see now he's attacking the pawn on h7 h6 is more or less forced as if uh, black goes g6 then this pawn can be used after that into the attack as well actually ideas like knight h7 already in the air uh, probably still g6 was the best move because on h6 look what happened queen is coming on h5 obviously this capture is impossible because of the checkmate if they don't take though they already have to think about the future sacrifices on e6 or on f7 concretely sacrifice on e6 followed by bishop takes h6 even and then queen to g6 check and queen to h7 checkmate is a very very serious threat farago tried to defend with bishop to d5 he covered the e6 square white continued knight h7 removed the rook and nevertheless took on h6 a very nice powerful play after the capture he takes back rook e3 by the way was also a very good move very typical attacking idea and it was also winning but white's idea is more concrete and straightforward he is threatening knight h6 check followed by bishop to h7 check and then checkmate imagine a move like knight c4 just some move check takes check and this is typical forcing checkmate on f7 after that obviously farago didn't fall for this he found his uh probably the best move f5 but this didn't help because white brought more peace into the attack with rook e3 and after bishop h4 he gave this nice check anyway the main idea being check and knight f6 now threatening checkmate and there isn't adequate way for black to defend against this one he tried this check first that was a tricky defense because if now white takes it there will be a tempo move queen c7 check followed by rook to e7 and the two pieces will be capable of defending the king along the seventh rank but why didn't play a brilliant game just to spoil it in one move he played king h1 he ignored the bishop and he resumed the threat queen to h7 check and after after that black sacrificed the queen and he went on to lose this one rather quickly brilliant game by Rezovayev and why am i showing it to you well I'm showing it to you because Tomaszewski is one of his last students, uh, one of the most talented students that he, he ever had. And Tomaszewski is playing with the white pieces 
against Mikhail Mchilishvili. He chooses a position that, well, okay, here it arose from the Slav defense, but it quickly transposed into the Queen's Gambit accepted, with the only difference that this pawn is not on a6. So basically, he is reaching again a position with the isolated pawn. And you can be sure that Tomaszewski got a lot of knowledge from his great coach into this position, knowledge that he demonstrated in this game. Okay, bishop e7. This position can arise from numerous openings. You know, Queen's Gambit accepted. It could be the Tarash defense. It could be um, the Nimtsi Indian also similar positions. The Karak on the pan of attack. Plenty, plenty of uh, ways we can reach similar positions. White's plan, as in most of the cases, with isolated pawn, the first and the foremost plan is to go d5 in the proper moment. And this is why black is stopping this move with the move knight b4. Okay, the drawback of the move knight b4, however, is that now this white knight is getting the e5 square. But before doing that, Tomaszewski plays bishop g5, which is once again renewing this idea in the proper moment to take on f6 and then to go for d5. Mchilishvili correctly reacts with h6, which is the main move and that prepares the development of the bishop on d7. It should be noted that bishop d7 immediately is a mistake, and it's quite a common mistake, by the way, because it allows the move d5. And that was played um, in a game between two very strong grandmasters, Maxim Rostein with the white piece against um, Duda, the Polish grandmaster, young, very young perspective, great player, obviously, but still not experienced felt for the move d5 in this situation and after the capture 95 95 bishop d5 and rook takes d5 white had huge advantage obvious threat is to besides taking on e7 is to double triple the pieces on the d5 and to take the bishop on d7 he took on g5 but after knight g5 now the move queen d3 is coming with a double threat against the pawn on h7 and the bishop on g7 the only thing that white a uh, black found was to play h6 but at the end of the day he lost the b7 pawn and later he also lost the game the idea of the move h6 is to prevent the staff to put the bishop on h4 and only after bishop h4 excuse me in this situation of h6 if they do bishop to h4 rather than taking on f6 only after that to play bishop d7 because now d5 is no longer working black can take it and in comparison to before this bishop stands on h4 rather than on g5 and it is hanging so rook takes d5 is simply losing not losing the piece but it's simply trading stuff and this time it's going to be equal rather than retreating the bishop on h4 though tomaszewski decided to go bishop takes f6 and after bishop f6 then he played knight e4 and he grabbed some of the nice outposts in the center with his knights which is the other good thing about the isolated pawn it provides a lot of nice uh, outposts for the knights outposts from where white can easily transfer his pieces to the king's side for the attack bishop h4 uh, was a preparatory move because the immediate bishop d b7 can be answered knight takes f6 and black either has to spoke his pawn structure or he is losing the exchange after knight d7 uh, as queen g5 can be answered f4 with the tempo and yeah the, the exchange is lost so bishop h4 is needed to which white went to rook a3 the rook lift normally white is lifting this rook via d3 to h3 or to g3 depending on the circumstances but uh, lifting the rook on e3 is also a common idea and I think that it was uh, Mikhail Butvinik who first used it in similar situations and this was the reason why he played the move a4 he liked to play a4 against the queen's gambit accepted bishop e7, rook h3, bishop d5 all of this so far has been played before bishop d5 is a novelty though I think that knight d5 that has been played earlier was the right thing to do and after queen g4 and all the straights black was doing fine in the game Ikonikov against Van Forest but I'm pretty sure that uh, Tomaszewski has prepared something about that one. Bishop d5 has 
the perfectly sensible idea of training another pair of pieces and black wants to treat at least two three four pairs of light pieces as many the more the better knight c3 bishop takes and bishop e7 is another careful defense because the bishop was already quite vulnerable on h4 and if uh, knight d5 there would have been simply a capture followed by queen d3 with a very very pleasant advantage for white there is no more isolated pawn in his camp so bishop e7 queen e2 back to where it belongs the queen belongs to the king side and the queen goes to g4 again very typical for the isolated pawn uh, the heavy pieces have extra space thanks to that that pawn compared to compare that to the black pieces and the pawn on e6 which is abstracting similar lifts similar shifts of the heavy pieces along the fourth the sixth excuse me in the fifth rank in that case and you will see the difference okay but concretely it's not so easy to break black's castling as he doesn't have basically he doesn't have too many weaknesses indeed the pawn on h6 is a little bit exposed and with his previous move white was threatening to take it but king to h7 is easily defending it Tomaszewski is trying to create more weaknesses and he's provoking them with the move rook g3 he will be very happy to see a move like g6 and indeed g6 is a very weakening move if it is not punished immediately it will be punished in the future here it is punished immediately actually with knight takes to f7 followed by queen takes g6 and um, everything falls apart obviously so Jedlishvili is correctly defending with the bishop not pushing anything keeping the pawns intact not creating any weaknesses but knight e4 is coming now and white puts more pressure on black's position after rook c7 came the move h4 that we have already seen with rose 5 that was the reason why i showed you the game by rose 5 even though h4 <coughs> has a different idea here than in that game uh, it first of all it gives air to the king so there will be no back rank checkmate it controls the g5 square so that the black pieces are not going to defend with bishop g5 ever it could prepare idea like knight g5 like resurvived it and then shift to the h file with checkmate on the king side and we can see that move is multi-purpose one it's an excellent <coughs> idea for the king side attack on the top of that after queen e7 Tomaszewski came with this fabulous idea king to h2 very deep and very very nice move at the same time and here we see a lot of the advantages that he has um, that that he has created thanks to these two moves first of all any time that the rook is coming on the first rank it's not going to be with a check which means that black will have hard time trading pieces at the moment the thing that he really cherishes for example if he tries rook c8 instead of knight d5 which he played in the game this is in fact losing material at once after knight f6 queen f6 rook f3 is attacking the queen queen cannot come on g5 one thing second thing that pawn on f7 cannot be defended which is actually the most important thing he's just losing the pawn if this is not possible and the last moves by black were orientated for that obviously to trade the, the rooks to come rook c1 what else can he do obviously black doesn't want to trade on e5 because then white is going to get the district square for his pieces in particular for the knight but it could be also used by the rooks the rooks are quite flexible at the moment they can easily go from one side to another not to mention the fact that the g7 pawn is hanging and i don't really see a way for black to defend it at the moment as rook g8 bumps into knight f6 and black is really missing his rook on c8 so trading on e5 is not only giving a very powerful pawn on e5 but uh, it also gives the open file it gives the f6 and the d6 squares for the white pieces what else can he do mm. that's a very tricky question this rook can possibly try to get inside on c2 but one should be very careful whenever they bring the rook here as after some trades there could be a check and this rook could be hanging okay at the moment it's defended by the knight but it doesn't really mean that it's not going to happen in the future that this idea is not there
say after a move like d5 in this situation uh well okay this guy's hanging but um sometimes we can play d5 if this is not hanging and try to attack the knight and try to attack the rook once that the knight moves away there are other ways of attacking as well maybe rook to b3 even first creating these threats anyway this doesn't seem so great and Mchudishvili came with a very nice move uh, with, uh, sorry, not very nice, but probably um, the most obvious move is a mistake here in the situation, ninety five, 5 Seemingly defending everything on the king side, but this allows the second rook a chance to be shifted and to join the attack along the third rank. So we can see that black was practically in a kind of a Zugzwang after the move king h2 on the top of everything that we have seen so far. And maybe a semi-waiting move in the spirit of Tomaszewski would have been the best thing for him to go king h8, to move away the king from the possible checks on this diagonal, from the possible checks on f6, and to prepare further the defense. Then he will decide what to do. Most importantly, who he wouldn't give a chance to this rook to come into the battle. While knight e5 allowed the move, okay, he first took on f6, and then he played rook to d3 intending rook to f3 and eventually capture on f7 and then queen g6 and total demolition of the black's position. I, however, like another very nice idea, which I'm pretty sure that Tomaszewski had considered during the game and maybe when he played the move king h2. And this is the move rook c1. Now rook c1 is obviously not coming with a check. And if the rook is taken anyway, why has knight e7? work after which all of a sudden this queen doesn't have any squares from where to defend the pawn on g7 and again it is the h4 pawn to blame for that one if the pawn wasn't there queen g5 would be a move and black would be winning but here he has to give up the queen and he will have to defend after that i don't know how most likely he won't be capable of defending this because without the queen the g7 pawn is in big trouble anyway so rook d3, Tomaszewski followed his logical idea. Then he came with the other rook on f3. This one he will need on the d file, you will see why in a moment. Knight 2, f5 is threatening the pawn, white has to defend it. And then king g8. Nothing really changes uh, what is going to happen next because white has prepared after queen f4 the decisive break. And the decisive break I mentioned before, which is the decisive break. This is the move d5. After d5, the power of the white piece is unleashed. Concretely, this knight on f5 is hanging. And also a lot of uh, tactical tricks and ideas start with that one. Uh, besides the obvious capture twice on f7 and an e6, there is another idea which for which black felt into the game, Chilishvili. Uh, was very low on time, I think, if I recall correctly at this moment, and he just missed that beautiful strike, after which white is just completely winning. Plenty of material, for example, if queen takes f7, there will be d takes e6, this one is hanging, this one is hanging, and this one, so he's basically losing at least two pawns. If knight, if king takes f7, there is d takes e6 with a check, king takes f6, just capture, and once again, he's losing plenty of material because after queen takes f5, even this rook is hanging. Or, well, white can choose to take the queen, for example, once that this king and the queen aligned on the same place. So he can take pretty much everything. And the way that the game ended was rook f8, d takes c6, he is two pawns down, and after rook c5, he resigned uh, after the move of a b4. So very important win for Russia was that one uh, against the very strong team of Georgia, which is normally underestimated, but they are capable of producing great, great um, games and matches. They had one wonderful Levon Pantolai this tournament. They had Jabava, Mchilishvili is an excellent player himself, Gagunashvili, all of these players. They had uh, to be fought well if Russia wanted to win this match. They managed to win it. They managed to win the European Championship. I congratulate them for that. And um, 
I would wish to see more games like the one that we have just seen by Tomaszewski. I hope that you enjoyed the video and I will see you next time.